came onto the scene in March with this kind of almost it was like fanfare and also the opposite of fanfare. He immediately made his presence felt in a way that that seemed different from from popes in recent memory. He's now head of the Catholic Church, 1.2 billion strong followers, and the largest ongoing historical institution in the world. So he's in a position of immense power, but he introduced himself as a man of great humility. Even in a very short amount of time, he's only been Pope for nine And welcome back to the Steve Malzberg Show, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, uh, earlier today, Time Magazine, I guess begrudgingly, uh, naming Pope Francis as their person of the year. Uh, Mr. Snowden, the traitor, uh, finished second. And I don't know where Miley Cyrus finished, but uh, I'm sure she's disappointed that it wasn't her. Uh, Joining us now is our friend Bill Donahue, the uh, head of the Catholic League. Hello, sir. How you doing, Steve? Merry Christmas to you. Thank you so much. Good to see you you. uh, in studio as always. Okay, so uh, your views, uh, was this a surprise to you? Uh, a little bit. Uh, I certainly expected him to beat out some of the competition, though. I thought it was fairly weak in, in, in that regard. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Obviously, this pope is loved by so many people. I think it's his authenticity that people like the most about him. Uh, I think there's also a bit of a left spin, which is that they're cherry-picking some of the things that he said. They don't talk about his criticism of secular progressivism, do they? Which he did a few weeks ago. So, But listen, I'll take it uh, because uh, Catholics, I think, are proud. And, I, and the reaction I'm getting from non-Catholics today is is just as strong. Yeah, and and non-Catholics and Catholics alike have a, a very high opinion of him in the in the polls that are latest poll out today, uh, not only here but around the world. Right. Well, you know, most elites are distant from us, and I, I can only speak as a Catholic. But most Catholics identify with their parish. They don't even identify with their bishop, quite honestly. They identify with their parish. If they're happy with their parish, they're happy with the Catholic Church. And if they're not happy with their parish, it doesn't make any difference what else is going on. The bishop is distant from the pope. Is always revealed and admired, but he again, he's very distant. The difference with this probe, and we had great predecessors, I want to mention that, because too often now I think there's a bit of a thrashing uh, of, of his predecessors. I love Benedict and JP too, but he does have that, that mark of genuineness that people can identify with, and that's a, that's a gift. It's not transferable. Absolutely. Now, do, do you believe that if he hadn't made those remarks on capitalism, uh, he said, you talk about the left bent, he still would have won this, uh, this honor? No, I don't think so. I don't think his humility would have been sufficient. I think what they're talking about is they're, they're, they like the idea he's talking about inequality. The same people who are talking about inequality are the ones who are standing by this administration, which is creating, which has promoted and generated more inequality than any administration in my lifetime. Do you know what's really striking to me? If you talk the talk r- rhetorically about the poor, you can actually put your heel right into their face and get away with it. This has been true for Marx all the way right up until our present day. Obama has the worst record of any president in my lifetime in dealing with the poor and in generating inequality, but he talks the talk, and that's enough to seduce the intellectuals. Where are you with Rush? I know you put out a press release when Rush made the remarks that he made about the Pope. I think later on he said he, they, they were misinterpreted. Where, where, where do you stand with Rush? Well, the first thing I said is that there's a bogus Catholic entity which has been denied its IRS status. It's a former Soros-funded group, Catholics and Alliance of the Common Good. The, for them to come out there and start to make the criticism of Rush Limbaugh is a bit too much for me to take. Beyond that is this. I've said this to some Catholics. Catholic League has never, never been after anybody for criticizing the pope or a priest or a bishop. We get involved when you hit below the belt, when you start becoming insulting, like a Bill Maher would be a classic right, example. Right. Um, he didn't like his the, the pope's views on economics. Rush Limbaugh is entitled to that. We're not out here. And by the way, I find it so striking that all these same people who all of a sudden have, have gotten this great fidelity to the pope were bashing his predecessor Benedict XVI all the time with alacrity. So th- there's a lot of phoniness going on here. No, everyone's entitled to criticize the Catholic Church on any public policy issue uh, just as long as it's not uh, hitting below the belt. And Rush didn't do that. No, of no, course not. not. At all. Okay, I didn't think, I didn't think so. No. Uh, uh, we're talking to uh, Bill Donahue of the Catholic League. Let me play you something from my show yesterday. Tom Hartman, liberal talk show host, uh, who has said that uh, because of what the Pope has said in his interpretation, he has said you can't be a Catholic and be a Republican. Uh, here's cut 37 who is voting Republic and believes Republican and believes that they're practicing the Catholic faith is doing so in a way that's inconsistent with the current Pope. Are you that's Catholic? 
I'm not. All right. Well, then, you know, uh, you know, well, it, it's, it's really a mockery. Why don't you tell Muslims how they're practicing? I bet you wouldn't be doing that. No, no, you wouldn't. All right. So anyway, so what he said was that, is that if you're a Catholic now and you you, you can't be practicing your faith uh, the way the Pope wants you to, uh, if you're a practicing Catholic, because there's a contradiction there. Okay. So then, if you're if you're a Catholic Democrat now, are you going to become pro-life? <laughs> are you going to be in favor of a man and woman marrying only? Are you going to be? In, are you happy with the Catholic uh, Church's teachings on sexuality? Is that what he's saying? I don't think so. Look, the Catholic Church has always been conservative on the moral order and more liberal when it comes comes to the socioeconomic order. So there's nothing particularly new here. The changes are it more stylistic than substantive with Pope Francis, but it, the audacity of someone to say the Catholics ought to line up single file now and just do what the Pope says to what they ought to do is really amazing coming from these people who have preached their anarchy before. Very quickly, you were on uh, Fox yesterday uh, with uh, the head of the atheist, David Silverman and Rabbi Shmuley. They want to put up a, um, a, uh, a, a, a monument to s Satanism, satanic uh, cult next to the Ten Commandments, and, and, and Silverman defended this. Well, my argument is that, the, the, look, this straight constitutional argument in one hand. The First Amendment is conditioned on time, place, and manner. Now, if you want to have your little worship, uh, devil worshiping, that's fine with me. I don't care. Put it up in July someplace. <laughs> put it wherever you want to have to do. But I don't think that to have the proximity matters, time and place, as well as matter. And what is done to veto the speech of somebody else, that's a problem for me. No, I, I agree with you. All right, I'm holding up a picture right now, and it's a billboard that's going up in Times Square, and it says, Send Modern Day Scrooges a Message, Celebrate the Prince of Peace, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Catholic League for Religious and Civil Rights. we got about 30 seconds left. What's the message here? The message besides is, the obvious. The, the, the message is is that, that practicing Catholics are not going to be intimidated by the minority of secularists who are out there to destroy the voice of religion in the public square, whether it be the Catholic voice, Jewish voice, Muslim voice, or whatever it may be. Uh, it's, 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 it's meant in, good, uh, in, in a good little jest there to them, but it's also making a public statement right there in the heart of Times Square, and we're not going to be intimidated by the left. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Thank Happy you so New much. Happy New Year to you. And uh, like you, I say every time you're here, the biggest admirer that you have, maybe not, but one of the biggest, because I think uh, you're great. Thank you so much. All right. Keep Bill Donahue, ladies and gentlemen, on the Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV and radio.